Okay, we're gonna see if we can paint a lovely liver chestnut today. I chose this little pin. Uh, I got it at Briarfest last year. I believe it is by Kitty Cantrell. Um, I'll have to double check on my web page. Um, I don't remember offhand. Um, actually, on my Facebook page, I believe it has this up with the information on it that I remember from Briarfest. But anyway, we're gonna start with this little guy. Um, I'm going to start. Well, he's prepped and primed, so he's ready to go. She, he, whatever you like to call it. Um, I'm gonna start with this color here. It is a Tamiya paint. Um, I don't often use these, but I'm just playing around today and we'll see what we can create. It's kind of like a bronze color, if you can see. It's a metallic bronze color. So we're gonna start with this one first. And we're just gonna put an entire base coat on. Now the good thing about this is that it's just a little pin, so it's easier to paint by hand, so you don't have to worry about too much brush strokes. And this paint actually levels out pretty nicely and dries super quick, so it's really great for hand painting things. Um, except that drying super quick part, that sometimes gets to be a pain in the butt, but um, so far it seems to be working okay. But I'm just going to kind of wing it today and see what we come up with. My goal here is a liver chestnut, but we shall see. Sometimes something different comes out. I also have a couple of new paints I wanted to try. So this was the perfect little project. That shouldn't take me forever. I really didn't mix this well enough because you can kind of see it's a little like streaky in the way of the color but that's okay because this is just a base layer and that might actually help us in the end and give us more depth sorry if the lighting is terrible it's a very very dark and gloomy day it's been pouring all day and like all day it looks like it was like eight o'clock at night so i've had hardly any light in here even though i'm in a basement but still a lot darker than the wall we'll see if i can get another light over here Maybe it'll brighten things up. But I just want to do this quick because I don't want it to dry and get all gross before I finish the layer. Because sometimes it'll lift and it's not good for anyone. That's why this is not great that it dries so fast. Um, so you have to stop in certain parts where it might not matter if it lifts a little bit when you go back. Like there, I should have taken that a little further back, but it's okay. These paints also um, have a lot of fumes to them. They are acrylics, but they are like solvent-based of some sort, like alcohol-based. Uh, you can thin these with alcohol, warming alcohol. Um, but they really smell. So, I mean, I don't really use them that often anymore. They're great for airbrushing, but hard to get out of the pots. Um, yeah, I, I used to love them, but they yeah, kind they of, kind of uh, lost their novelty. Sorry, my camera cut out. I shall try to finish this quick so I can clear up some space. So there, we've got, oops, I missed the spot here. Okay, I think I got it all now. So here we have the base layer. It's a metallic bronzy color. Um, this is the Tamiya XF28. And we will start here and I'll wait for this to dry, which shouldn't take too long. And then we'll move on to the next layer while I free up space on my camera so that doesn't cut out again. Okay, so it's all dry and ready for the next layer here. Um, I'm going to start with Saddle Brown. Watered down. 
so it's a little transparent while we work. So we don't want to cover up everything we just did. And let's see what happens. And you kind of want to leave the lightest layers um, the most transparent so that um, metallic kind of shines through as a highlight. So you don't want to like super cover this completely. And again, I don't normally um, do this type of stuff by hand. It's just a fun little project um, that I wanted to play around with, so that's why I'm doing it this way. And doing like little medallions and stuff is actually quite fun because it's more like doing flat work almost. Um, and you don't have to worry about a huge model. Um, and it's kind of like just painting a canvas and like the line drawing is here for you already. So they're fun. Um, it's a nice break from normal... Uh, methods that you're doing. You can always try something new. They're great for testing techniques. So. And they're great little pieces to collect as well. So I'm basically kind of shading like this as I would with anything. Um, getting in the dark crevices where the shadows would fall keeping it a little lighter where the light would shine. You just got to make sure you keep your paints thin, translucent, workable. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to really blend acrylics too well. And sometimes it's kind of hard to see what you're doing because um, paints usually dry a different color than when they're wet, um, which is why I highly recommend making color cards of all of your paints. Um, if you want to know how to do that, you can check out one of my other videos on the color cards. I show you how to make those. Um, they're great for seeing what the color will look like when it's dry, so you can pick out the colors that you need. Because in the palette, it looks way more red than when you put it on. But, and then, like, in some areas where it's dry already, you can't tell if you went too dark or too light because it changes once it's dry. So you really got to be careful and watch what you're doing. Actually, along on this layer with the brown... We want to start the shading of the muzzle, which is going to be darker, like a grayish, I think. I have to check my reference. Um, we'll put that in there so now. I grabbed some dark gray. Where's the color? Dark gray. And we're going to do this on the muzzle. Prepare for our later layers. And yes, I'm using a crappy brush for some reason. Sometimes when I do little projects like this, I just like to just play. So I take out like a cruddy brush and see what I can do with a cruddy brush. Um, I mean, later I might switch to my good brushes, but this is one of those ones you can just get at Michael's. They're really cheap and they're really kind of cruddy, but um, a lot of times they get the job done. So I don't know. I like to play with these sometimes. Um, 
mostly like a challenge to see if I could, you know, basically kind of like a challenge. But for some reason, they're actually quite good for doing things like this. Don't know why. So you want to be careful in what you're doing here because this really needs to get blended. So you don't want to have any stark lines where that ends. So keep it thin, keep it wet. And don't be worried. Don't don't be concerned if you don't cover the whole area yet because we have a lot more layers to do. Just get in those crevices as best you can so we can start building up the shadows and everything. See, now this brush is getting a little too cruddy for the detail work I need to do. But we'll go as far as we can, and then I will probably switch brushes. Alright. Now, while this section uh, has some time to dry, I'm going to start over here again with the next color, because um, this is pretty much dry already that I can do that. Um, this one is flat brown. It's a little darker than the last color we did. And we're going to go even more in those crevices and try not to go into the lighter areas. Now you always want to think of this as you're building up. You never want to think of this as going to be your final color, final layer. Um, that's what's tough about it sometimes, working in light layers like this or working in pastels and airbrushing is that you're not going to get the instant gratification of like, there's the color. It's this color now, it's that color now. You have to actually think ahead and build it up to that. Um, so there is a lot of thinking that's involved when you do this sort of thing. Um, sometimes sitting there thinking what colors I'm going to use and how I'm going to go about a project like takes longer than me you know painting the base layer or something because it requires lots of thought but this one oh see that wasn't that dry yet and I just took some off this one though is just a fun project so I'm kind of winging it I do like to wing it sometimes because you know it just kind of keeps you on your toes yeah, see, my finger was saying, dirty from the um, I accidentally I... rubbed, my head black on my finger that I rubbed here, and it got a little dark, but I still have to go over that area anyway. So just be careful. And that's the cat being a brat. She's not allowed in here and she knows that. So she does all that random noises to try and get my attention outside the door. Sometimes she'll try and creep in here. Oh, sounds like she went back upstairs. So, blending this into the nose now. Covering up that gray. As you can see, it's still a little darker here. 
So it just kind of added shading what we did before and just kind of blends it in. Hand painting with acrylics can be very difficult sometimes because acrylics don't want to blend. Um, so you have to really work thin and wet in order to kind of get them to work. Um, almost kind of like watercolors. Um, so you just really got to be careful and don't just glob the paint on there. Because then you'll get brush strokes. And whenever you thin your paints, you don't usually really want to just use water um, uh, if you want to keep them flowing nicely and binding nicely. Um, stick with a flow improver or some sort of medium for acrylics. Um, it'll make your life a heck of a lot easier and um, give you better results and make blending a lot easier too. I mean, you can use water, um, just don't use too much water. Because then your paint may not stick. Because you're spreading out the uh, pigment in the binders. <laughs> This is actually coming along very nicely. Now I'm going to go back in with that gray and put another layer on the nose here. While this is still wet and I can still blend. Although sometimes when it's wet, um, you tend to kind of lift what you just did. So again, got to be careful. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to dip my brush back into that um, flat brown, I think it was, the darker brown that we were just doing, and just blend this in so it's not so stark gray. Oh, it'd be happy. Help if you could see what I'm doing. So I kind of put a little layer of the gray there, and now I'm going back in with the darker brown, in case you didn't see that before. I don't know how much the camera cut off. Um, I just have a really bad setup for this. Like, I literally have, like, a camera, a little camera stand thing that came with my photo booth, and I have a paper towel roll on that that I cut a slit out of, and that is where my phone is recording from right now. So it's not very fancy, but seems to be getting the job done okay as I hit it. So my paints are starting to dry which on my palette, which is getting a little annoying. So I might need to replenish that and redo that. I'm gonna have to, oops, I'm gonna have to go empty my phone anyway because it keeps cutting out because I run out of space. And I don't know what more I can delete on there, because I don't have much on there. And we need a little bit of gray around the eyes, forgot about that before. 
एफ सी एफ सी basically where your skin is oh, i'm sorry where your the hair is thin you're going to see the skin which is the gray I think I am happy with this layer now. Let that dry. And then we'll go on to the next layer. You can see the shading actually starting to build up. Uh, this is layer, what, three? Um, but there's still quite a bit to go. So you can kind of see how thin we have to work. And there'll be quite a few layers, I think. So, onward. Now here comes the fun part. Normally, at this point, this is where um, I would start hitting things with oils because um, I have a basic base layer here and then I would like do the shading and stuff with the oils. But this little project is going to just be acrylics to show you guys that you can do things in acrylics as well. Um, you know, it's just a little more tedious and time consuming. Uh, so the fun part now, we are going to take, um, this is transparent shade additive. However, I see no difference between this and the transparent violet. Um, except this one like has like a glossy finish, but um, any dark violet will do. And we're gonna go into our dark areas and like start creating some contrast here. Basically, some really dark shadows. And give it an all around basic tint here. You definitely don't want to go crazy with this because it's actually quite dark, so. So when you see me blend like that, um, what that is, is basically I put some paint on the brush, I'll put it down, um, but then I'll take some of my um, paint medium or water and then quickly bring it back in there to blend it out. Um, you don't want to wait too long to do that because then it will dry in place. So here I'm just putting down paint right here and now I'm going to take my thinner and blend it in. So in case you were wondering how that was happening.
<coughs> oh, excuse me. Allergies been acting up. <clears throat> so what I'm actually going to do here is find a slightly larger brush, larger, softer brush, and kind of just blend it out. You can do this while it's wet still, just very lightly, and that helps get any brush strokes out also. I'm very, using very little paint. I'm not using that much at all because you don't want it to be too dark. You don't want to cover up all those other layers. You want the other layers still to show through a little. Um, which is why it's good uh, to work with transparent stuff um, when working like this. And what I just did there is basically kind of like how I work with oils, too. I put the paint down and then took a soft brush and just blended it in. Um, so it's very similar to doing that. It's just that you have to be quick and you have to be work really wet with the acrylics. Otherwise, you're not going to get them to blend. They just stay where you put them because they dry a lot quicker. And when painting by hand like this, I don't recommend, you know, sorts of craft paints or any heavy body stuff um, because you do want to work thin and because, you know, for blending purposes. So a lot of the times um, airbrush paints are very good. That This this shade additive right here is Comart. Comart is an airbrush brand. It's very thin, watery paint, so I don't even have to thin this for it to be this liquidy. But then on the downside, sometimes they can be too thin for things that you're using them for. So it's all about getting the right materials for the right techniques. I'll put some shade additives in the gray area too, even though we're going to come back over. But why not? Kind of balance the color out. Now it might get a little hard to tell. I probably should have used the uh, violet instead because this is a glossy drying paint. So it might look weird because it might not look like it's dry when I'm ready to move on. So you might have to seal it to kind of give it an even coat. It depends on how difficult it's being and wants to get in the way of what it looks like. It might not be too bad since I'm working really thin anyway. Right. I'm pretty happy with that for the shading. See, we kind of put like a whole tint over the whole thing almost from blending like that. Um, I'm going to do the gray on the muzzle again. Though I might add a teensy bit of black to this gray now because we're getting a little darker here and just use it for the really dark areas. Actually, I'll just use the purple. See what that happens. See what happens there. If it darkens it enough, eh, doesn't really darken it. it just kind of turns it purple. So I will add a smidge of black to this. Okay, so I added a small smidge of black to that dark gray, and we'll do what we did before.
going to shade this gray with just the black, like in the nostril, anywhere though there's a deep shadow, just to kind of bring it out a little. Because when things are one color, they sometimes end up looking a little... Oh, that was the gray. That is not black. There's the black. Sometimes when it's all one color, it ends up looking a little flat, so you kind of want to keep that in mind. Contrast is your friend for some things. So now this is just the straight black. And it just gives it a little more depth. And then shade that in with the gray. See, now it's kind of lifting a little because it's semi-dry. So what I did there, I put some black down, and then I took some of that dark gray, even like black still on my brush, just kind of wet blending it in. This one, I'm rinsing the brush because I don't want much black on there now. And now I'm coming back in with the dark gray over that. Oops, that brush was way too wet. I'm going to have to do that section again. So, black in here. Grab dark gray over here. And quickly blend that in together. And kind of bring that up into the face. Sorry for mumbling. It's kind of hard to work and talk at the same time. You also want this brush to be dry, the one that you're blending with. I actually just made the mistake of rinsing it, so it was kind of lifting some of the stuff here. So just keep that in mind. When you want a blending brush, just make sure it's dry. Alright, we're going to have to do another layer on that because it's like lifting it up now. And here is some of that darkened dark gray again, just with a tiny smidgen of black, so it's still mostly the gray. So there we have it for this layer now. I'm going to let this dry before we continue on. I'm not sure where I want to go from here. Because like I like this color, but he clearly definitely still needs more layers. Um, so we may have to go back and forth a little bit. And I'll see what happens. I went ahead and gave him a spray of um, Cryola Matte Finish. Uh, when I was testing out the next color to use, I was getting a little bit of lifting. That tends to happen when you're using thin and wet paint. So, um, it's, if you're getting that, if that's starting to happen to you, it's best to put a layer of sealer on before you continue so you don't ruin anything or lift anything before that. But it is not necessary if that's not happening. Um, 
I love Krylon Matte. It's a really sturdy finish. Uh, it keeps colors vivid and vibrant. Um, the only thing is that it can get pretty glossy, as you can see. Um, this is only one layer. So, But I do like to keep my medallions and things like this glossy. It just kind of separates them from the regular models that I have. But um, if you don't like that glossiness, you can always hit it with dull coat later, and it'll take that right out. Um, the only thing I suggest, do not use Krylon with oil paints. Um, I have had crazing happen, and that is the only common denominator that the pieces had. So I would not recommend it if you're using oils. Other than that, it's great for uh, on acrylics. It's great in between pastel layers. Um, but anyway, enough on that. Back to our... Uh, liver chestnut here. So the next color I'm going to use, I have decided, is going to be a burnt sienna. Uh, this is an acrylic ink. This is a very expensive paint, so you don't need this. Any burnt sienna will do. I like to use this because, you know, it's already thin for me pretty much and, um, you know, a lot less fuss and it's a really, really good paint. It's just really expensive. So if you don't want to invest in something like that, then any burnt sienna will do just fine. We are going to put a very thin layer, pretty much on the whole thing, um, to kind of tone it to where we want to. I hope. We'll see what happens. Just keep it very thin, very transparent, so we can just tint what we're doing here into a little more of a red zone. super crazy about the color, but we'll see where this leads us. Um, hopefully this is just an ugly stage before it hits the uh, what we're looking for here. But I feel like adding this is really going to make it pop in the later layers. It's just getting that there so it's not covering everything else up. That's the tough part. And that you don't lose your other layers. Okay, well, there goes my camera. Totally just dropped you guys like twice. So, I think this is good for this layer. Let's just focus. There we go. Um, it just generally pretty much just tinted it in a reddish tone. Um, so we kind of gone back to where we were before, but now we have a lot more of undertones and undershading. So we're going to let this dry and continue with the next layer. Next step we're going to do is we're going to go back to that violet again and once again shade those dark areas and anywhere, any crevices and things like that. I keep using the wrong side of this brush because the back of the brush is like the same color as the bristles. It's getting annoying. Yeah, so we're getting some nice contrast now. And we're really getting that liver in there. That purpley liver chestnut color going at this point with this color. I'm 
Probably should have let this dry a little more. There are still some wet spots. It's kind of just blending with the last layer, so. It helps and it doesn't sometimes. Now medallions, when you're painting, it actually helps if you think of it more of like a 2D piece, like a canvas, which they kind of are, which is also nice to, you know, take a break from the model sometimes and do little projects like this, because they're so completely different. Um, and you just relax a little more. Another thing that's a little tough about using the Krylon or any shiny paints or sealers is that it's getting a little tough for me to see what I'm doing because I keep getting a glare, um, but that that could be just my lighting that does that, so it just gets annoying sometimes. I feel like I'm squinting. Looks like we're starting to get there. We're starting to get somewhere, that's for sure. Just kind of bringing that a little bit into the nose, just to tint it just a little bit, because just kind of ties it all in together. You have no idea how badly I want to go to oils or pastels right now to just smooth this out and be done. Um, that's the thing with doing hand painted acrylics. You get a different, um, different result. Like it's almost textured in a way, not so much because of brush strokes. It's just, it gives a little more of a textured appearance. Um, it's just a different style which is another reason to switch it up sometimes because then it just keeps your brain going and just prevents you from being stuck in doing the same thing over and over again. And you can also learn new things to help you with the way you normally do things. So I try and force myself sometimes like this to do what I set out to do is paint this hand hand painted acrylics. I mean, if I end up having like way too much trouble, I'll just go into what I need to use, but this is more for fun, and I kind of want the challenge right now, so that is that. Alright. So, I'm thinking I like that. Um, we're almost there. I mean kind of there already. Let's see what this looks like when it's dry and um, go from there. But I don't think we need much more just to kind of solidify it up a bit. Now we're going to want to kind of um, flatten this out a little bit and kind of bring out the highlights that we covered a little bit um, to kind of smooth things over. Uh, so I'm going to start with um, a bronze color again, but this time it's not the Tamiya. It's... Um, Liquitex this is also an acrylic ink. You can use any bronze that you have. Um, I wouldn't recommend the Tamiya for this because the Tamiya is dry too fast um, and we're going to need to kind of blend it in. So Tamiyas don't work well for blending by hand anyway. So I would go with a regular acrylic or an acrylic ink for what we're doing now. And we're just going to go over those highlighted areas and kind of blend that in. Just to bring that out a little. I 
kind of going like a little step backwards almost, which is sometimes where things get a little frustrating because then you end up going back and forth quite a bit. But that's what adds depth. So this should even out the, uh, the darker areas a little bit um, and just kind of blend things together. So yeah, this should be about enough. Um, it's almost a whole full layer of the bronze over it very thinly. Not quite, but almost. To kind of blend it all in. And now next we're kind of gonna, gonna kind of want to flatten this out a little bit and we'll go in with some other colors again. Now I'm going to come in with uh, Josonia Brown Earth, which is kind of like a light reddish burnt umber, if you don't have that. Now we're just going to kind of... Oops, wrong brush. I'm going to kind of flatten it out now. So we're kind of doing what we started doing again, uh, just with some different colors and uh, smoothing it out. Hopefully this works. This is just a higher coverage paint because sometimes when you use inks they tend to have an uneven appearance because they get in every nook and cranny because they're so thin. Um, this should just help uh, even everything out. But you want to try and make sure you keep it as thin as you can because you don't want to cover everything. So that semi uneven texture under there actually adds a lot of depth and realism to it um, so you don't want to cover all of that completely now at any point in the process you like the results you can stop I mean this is not the right or wrong way to do it this is just how I'm doing it for this little project that I'm doing um, you know, there's no rules, pretty much. You just, just go, have fun, make mistakes. And um, that's how you learn. And that's how you uh, improve. Now while I'm doing this, I'm covering up some of the bronze, so I'm just going to take some of the bronze and blend it back in those areas that I go over. So it'll blend it nicely with this color and keep the highlight there. It's a lot of back and forth when you uh, paint by hand in any medium. So that's what you have to remember. I'm 
running out of space on my palette here. Try not to pick up any other random colors that are there. Okay, so there we have that layer now. You can kind of hopefully see how a lot of that uneven appearance kind of disappeared and we now have like a, almost like a solid layer, um, but yet there's still some underlying shading from where we had before. And then we're gonna go in with a darker color um, again and get some of those shadows back in there. So to do that shading, we're going to go with Indian Red Oxide, also from Josonia, another um, opaque paint. Uh, at least more opaque than the inks we were using before. This has got a darkish, reddish, purplish color to it, which would be good for our shadows. For the most part. I'm also going to put a little bit of that purple on our palette again, um, just in case we need that to mix in to make a little darker. So this is just the Indian Red Oxide. which seems to be coming off very, very red. But I have a feeling this dry is really dark. According to my color card, anyway. Now, in using these paints, we're going to have to probably go back and forth with the other colors we just did in the previous layer to blend it, which is what I'm doing now. This is that um, brown earth that I just took to go back in to blend down that red oxide. Because they don't blend as easily as the inks would because the inks are very thin. Taking some of that purple now and going into those crevices in the dark areas just to kind of darken this up a little bit because I don't see it drying how I really want it to dry. Or it's just not dry enough yet to get its full color. So that's why this gets a little confusing.
trying to stay in camera here. What's going on? Here we go. Now is that time where you want to work fast. You have to blend these when they're wet. Back in here with some of that bronze. To blend that in. I should probably get out some of that grayish black that we mixed last time because because these paints are so opaque, it's covering up the dark now, and we want to make sure we keep that and keep it blended. So some of that dark gray, come on, mix with black. This is where disaster starts to strike. Because you're trying to work fast, you're trying to keep it blended, you're trying to get the right colors. You can kind of see how paint's a little drier here that I'm using, and I'm struggling here to get this blended, especially since it's a large area with a large blending. So you really got to keep this stuff wet and flowing. So what I do here, if it's hard to see, I lay down the darkest color and then I bring in that medium color to blend it in and then I will fix the highlights with the uh, bronze. I gave it a spritz of uh, the matte finish to see where we're at again and it actually is pretty nice and even now. Um, so I would think the spotty color is pretty much done. Um, you could keep adding more dark layers if you want it darker and, you know, just to your reference, to your preference, and um, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to actually come back into the muzzle here because this, this is the only area where it's not 100% fully done yet. So I'm going to take that dark gray and black again and just build this area back up. But the rest here is pretty much good to go. Um, I'm going to do the eyeball and hair in another video two other videos. So stay tuned for that. Um, in the meantime, let's finish this little one up. And I lost my brush. Here it is. Okay, so this is that dark gray with some black. 
Plastik stehen. And now I'm going in with just black and getting in those really dark areas while it's still wet so it kind of still shades it in and also makes it a little darker, brings it out a little. Just go in with the mix a little bit up here on the eye because I can see some little inside areas that I missed there. Get a good solid base. Okay. I think we are good to go. And there is your liver chestnut, or dark chestnut, whichever you'd like to call it. Um, and that is how it's done. Hand painting on a medallion with acrylics. And that's pretty much it. I mean, there's your base layer. There is your body color for a uh, liver chestnut, dark chestnut. Um, I'm going to, like I said, do a separate video for the mane and a separate video for the eye, so you won't have to watch the entire video if you're just looking for those things. Um, it keeps things organized and neat, so um, please like, please comment, please share. Uh, it really helps my videos, it really helps keep me making videos like this if you enjoy them. Um, and that's about it. Happy painting and thanks for watching.